guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Tiffany. I am the owner of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay LLC, which is a company that focuses on costume and prop fabrication, as well as education. And I am so grateful to be back here at the Createx headquarters to bring you more techniques that you can use for your painting. Today we're gonna to be doing a rust patina, and this is how I used it for the spikes in all of the horns on my Lilith costume. This is basically a rust mud look that you can put to age your pieces. Good. <laughs> and here's all the materials that you're gonna need. First off, we have our example piece that we're gonna be using, and this is actually an old piece that I did not use for my Lilith costume, but it's the same exact piece as our example. This is resin printed and has been airbrush painted with wicked red, brown, and black. And we're gonna be adding all of these little techniques to give you the rust look in just a second. For this project, you're gonna want some disposable paint brushes, a little container that you can put your paint mixture in, You'll also want some water. The paint that we're gonna be using is the Wicked line, specifically Wicked Brown and Wicked Red. And we're gonna be using Pabrika. You can also use as a substitute cinnamon if you'd rather that. And then for any cleanups, you'll want some paper towels. So let's start to make our paint mixture. Now, when we make this, we do want it to be a little bit more thick so we're gonna kinda go back and forth with different products. So first adding in some of our brown. Then some of our red. And some of your paints may be a little bit more thick, some may be a little bit more thinner. So it'll just depend on how well you shook your product beforehand and then just kind of mix it. I'm just using a basic paintbrush and then we're gonna get some of our paprika. Be warned, you may sneeze. And then you're just gonna wanna mix it. So this is where, depending on how much you put in will depend on how much uh, thick your material will be, if you need to add in a little bit of water to thin it out a little bit more. I put too much there. Add in some more paprika to make it thicker. And depending on the color of rust that you want will depend on if you want to add more red to make it a more vibrant color or more brown if you want it to be a more dirt, darker look. I'm gonna do a little bit more paprika to make it thicker. And this is more of the consistency that you want. You can even go a tiny bit more thicker as we want the paprika to actually be visible when we start using it to apply to our surface. And this seems pretty good to me. Okay, so now that we have finished with our mixture of our paint and paprika, it is time to paint our little fellow here. All right, so now let's start by applying our paint onto our piece. And for this, the product works best for holding in place if you put it into deeper channels. You can just apply it in the place and I kind of dab it up and down. A reminder that your paint is going to look more vibrant while it is wet and when it dries, it's actually gonna get a little bit darker. And if any of the paint touches the surface and it has no paprika, it will show a little bit of that paint onto it as well but we're just gonna kind of fill it in. It as well, when it dries, will shrink a bit as the paprika will settle down. So it won't be as thick when it looks, but it will still be noticeable. And 
And I mentioned at the beginning that if you don't want to use paprika, you can also use cinnamon. It works just the same, you just have a different smell. So if you would prefer the smell of cinnamon onto your piece, you can do that. For me, I decided to go with paprika as for the headpiece that I wore for this costume was a, the headpiece that I wore for this costume, it had horns and I did the same kind of rust technique onto it, but it was sitting really close to my face and I'm not a big fan of the smell of cinnamon. So I would rather smell the paprika uh, personally, but you can use either one. Any of the paprika that sits on the surface that's not in a crevice can potentially come off if it's not properly sealed as well. So just be warned, if it's a part that's gonna be handled a lot with your hand, so if this section, if I was gonna be touching it after it's dry, it will partly come off over time. So I prefer to put this in more of the crevices as this is also where naturally your dirt is gonna build up if this was a real piece that was aging, sitting outside, or if it was to have rust, the rust is gonna go into the spots that are gonna be deeper as well. So we're kind of mim mimicking that look. And I've got this back half pretty much done on this side. You'll most likely when doing this process, you'll either want to prop your piece up so you can do the full 360, or you'll wanna wait for this section to dry and then flip it. You will want to wait two to four hours for this to dry before touching it. And a reminder that the parts that are thicker and you have more product, it will take longer to dry. Even though the surface may look dry, the under part might not be. And to show you the difference, this is the dry version, and I went with a little bit of a darker look, where with this paint mixture, we went with a bit of a more red look. But I did apply the same amount as I did on both of them. So this, you can see, is sitting higher on the surface, and when it dries, is going to shrink down into the surface more. Any of the paint without the paprika is going to be slightly noticeable, so you can see on this section right here, you can see a little bit of where the paint was and same here, but there is no paprika and it kind of blends into the surface more. The final step for your piece after it has fully dried is you will want to seal them as that will help prevent the paprika paint mixture from flaking off as much. And depending on how you want the look to be, I would recommend using either the satin or the matte UVLS clear line from Createx Colors, as this will help to protect your piece and have it last longer. You will want to apply this with an airbrush gun. And again, it does need to be fully dry before you apply it. And that, guys, is how to get your very own rust patina onto pieces that you want using Wicked Line as well as Paprika and to spice up your piece. Thank you guys so much for watching this and I hope you enjoyed this little technique video. And if so, we'd love to hear from you. So let us know in the comments. And if you need any help with any of the stuff that you saw in this video, just let us know and we'll be happy to help answer any of your questions. As well as don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and head over to my channel, Tiffany Gordon Cosplay and subscribe there as well. And we'll see you for our next tutorial. Much love guys.